Hi, my name's Nick Thorne. I'm the Fleet Maintenance Manager at MC Rental here in Larkfield. And this is Jordan Harris, uh, who works for us in the returns department. And uh, that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about uh, the return of vehicles um, and uh, what's acceptable in terms of condition, return, what's unacceptable, what will be charged for, etc. And we hope to give everyone a good guide um, as to when a vehicle comes back, what to expect, um, and hopefully make the process as easy as possible. So the br a brief overview is um, the vehicle will be collected either by one of our drivers brought back here to Larkfield or dropped off by you, the customer and we will um, walk around it either with yourselves or if, um, if the driver's brought it back, I'll walk around, take some photos of literally everything. It won't necessarily be damage. It could be just a side bit profile of the truck just to show any, any little niggles that are in there. We just try and make it as transparent as possible from us to the customer as to what we are charging for, that we're not trying to you know, pull the wool over your eyes as such, that we are you know, we are charging because we believe it is a chargeable damage, but in that sense, we try and make it a little bit easier by explaining with a customer. If they've got a query about why something's being charged, we all are liaise with the customer, either through phone calls or um, via emails, just to make it a little bit easier as to why they're getting the costs that they are. Ultimately, we do understand that these are working vehicles, um, and of course, we can't expect a vehicle that's been out uh, for two, three, four, maybe five years to be in perfect condition, uh, which is why we use the industry standard wear and tear guide to, to make it as transparent as possible, as, as Jordan just said. As, as previously discussed in our previous videos, we do prep these vehicles for pre-owned sale. So we, we want to get them up to a condition that the next owner will hopefully appreciate. So Jordan's now going to show us some examples um, of some return vehicles and give some examples of what is acceptable and perhaps not acceptable in terms of the return process. So if we start here with, uh, with this vehicle here, if we look up to the air intake, you'll notice that it's there, but there's a little bit of trim missing around the outside. So as much as it is a small part that's missing, we'd have to replace the whole air intake, which is roughly about 800 pounds. I do appreciate that it's quite expensive for that little bit of damage, but it is damaged nonetheless. Tell us a bit about what, in terms of paintwork, Jordan, what would be an acceptable wear and tear situation? So, acceptable wear and tear. Um, we're talking maybe little pin dents. We're talking uh, scuffs that could perhaps be buffed out. Um, anything that is relatively minor paintwork wise, if it, doesn't, if it doesn't require too much, so no panel work, if it doesn't require a, a paint shop or the body shop we have on site, to sand it down and to go at it basically. That is the, the bare minimum I think. It's, if you can get your fingernail in the scratch and it's quite long, we would charge it because it would have to be repaired. That would need to be painted, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and a good example is uh, on the Volvos, sometimes the wind can catch the door and the check strap will bend the door and we have to repair it when it comes back. It could well be, there's no paint damage but it will still have to be straightened nonetheless. So let's talk about tyres then, uh, the which black, uh, the every vehicle circular, has, as the, we know. The black circular thing. Yes, yeah. indeed. So upon return, um, we, all we ask is that the tyres are above the legal limit with no cuts to cords, no major sidewall damage. Um, and it's just a reminder that to the customers, we all, we've got quite a flexible policy on changing them at three mil. So, they, they've got, there's plenty of time to have your tyres changed before they come back to avoid any unnecessary costs. Yeah. What about things like cuts and, and, and nicks out of the tyres and, and things like that that would perhaps uh, cause an MOT failure? That would go down as chargeable. Yeah. Um, because if it's something that would fail an MOT, obviously that would go against an operating lease for, for a customer. So therefore we would have to change it for the next customer. Mm. So it would be down as chargeable damage. Right. Again, there could be there's a, could be a conversation that could be had about it, but I think ultimately that would be chargeable. Jordan, why don't we go and have a look at some examples of perhaps a bit more severe damage yeah, um, and give some ideas of maybe, uh, again, why they're not acceptable and what kind of cost yeah, we might be looking at. Yeah, let's, let's go have a look. So, this here is a near-on perfect example of what a truck should look like when it comes back to us. I say nearly perfect because as you can see up here, the mirror back's 
it's missing. So we would have to replenish that before the new owner gets it. And what would what would that kind of thing cost then? Uh, well, with painting, probably about sixty pounds, sixty to seventy pounds, right. um, give or take. So that's looking at mainly the outside. What do we? How far do we sort of look? Do we look at the inside of the vehicle? Yeah, we do. Um, so the main culprits when a truck comes back is cigarette burns, which they shouldn't be there. It can be tiny, but it's chargeable because the vehicles, we ask that they're not smoked in and I'm, by law, they're mm. not supposed to be smoked in. So it's cigarette burns, um, you could have the instrument uh, cluster can get cracked. Um, again, that's chargeable. It might not necessarily fail an MOT and it might not flag up on a, an inspection, but it is damaged and therefore chargeable. Sometimes you occasionally get air vents, air vents are damaged. Um, but sometimes, you know, again, allowing for wear and tear, sometimes they can come loose and we won't charge for that. It's if something has been pulled out or even something like if a, a DVS kit has been fitted and they've removed it and we have holes left in panels, right. we would then ultimately charge it. And is that kind of thing repairable? Uh, yes, it can be. And in instances we have, we have charged for repairs rather than replacement. But obviously, depending on how large the holes are and where the holes are, uh, we may have to replace panels. Right. So what about glass, the windscreens um, and the side door windows, things like that, Jordan? Uh, so we don't, we don't cover any window damage, whether it's windscreen or windows. So anything from a little tiny, anything from a chip that's bigger than a penny would be chargeable. And obviously then cracks, cracks are chargeable. And depending on the severity of how many chips you've got, we may have to replace the screen, therefore incurring the cost of a new screen and fitment of said screen. So there is a bit of flexibility and leeway there. Yeah, of course there, there is, yeah. yeah. And again, we do try and work with the customer yeah. in, um, we, we try and be as fair as we can be. If there's three chips and they're quite small and they're dotted around, we, we don't have to replace the screen. If there's a big uh, bullet hole, let's say, um, in the driver's eye line, um, not only would it be an MOT failure, but we have to, we have to change the screen. So here's another example of one that's just been recently been uh, returned. Um, yeah. And there's, there's quite a bit of damage on this one, Jordan, isn't there? Yeah, it's quite extensive um, from, from the top all the way to the bottom. And again, this is something that could be avoided if I could come out and have a look at it or if the customer wants to send me photos, that's absolutely fine. Right. Um, and then we can again liaise with the customer as to how we could have this repaired prior to it coming back. Right, I and see. And again, for the customer and for ourselves here, it makes it a lot smoother as a process of off hiring the vehicle and you know finding this a new home and also the customer not incurring perhaps such a heavy charge. So again, it's, all, it's just part of an ongoing discussion really, isn't it? Yeah, of course. And as I say, it is a discussion. There's this, I will send the estimate over, a customer can look at it and they can, you know, they can pick parts and they can query it with myself and we can talk about it. And I, lo I love talking to customers because I get to meet people, I get to talk to people and really help understand as to why we're charging on these vehicles. Let's kind of have a look at some more tools then, Jordan, indoors and uh, just see what else we can offer that customer that can help exactly, you know, yeah, we smooth do have out a wear the situation. We do have a wear and tear guide, so perhaps we should go and show them that. So Jordan, this is our um, wear and tear guide. It's yeah. pretty much industry standard, isn't it? It is indeed. Um, and we can, uh, customers, we can easily get copies of this too. Yeah, we can either send it to them uh, via post or we can email it to them. Um, and what this will show, of course, is this, this covers both uh, the interior and the exterior of the vehicle. Yes. Uh, and there's example pictures in here of, for example, what would not be acceptable. Yep. And then obviously, of course, what is acceptable. Yeah, of course. Uh, again, making it very transparent for the customer to, to see what we think is acceptable and what we don't think is acceptable. Yeah, and this includes uh, bodywork, interior. Includes um, curtains on uh, curtain siders, yep. fuel tanks, tires, tires. Uh, wing tops. Everything that you need is in there. Perfect, and there's also, there's also an example of a vehicle checklist here. Yes. Um, and this is the, uh, the form that's basically completed when we do a, a return inspection, Indeed. right? Indeed, uh, it's filled out on the outside when the customer either takes delivery of the vehicle uh, or they pick it up from us here at Larkfield. I'll, I'll walk around it with the customer, check any, addition, any existing damage that's there, and then when it comes back, the other side is filled in 
and it's just a comparison really of what is on one side and what is on the other. So hopefully everyone's found this uh, little piece helpful. Um, if you'd like a copy of the wear and tear guide, uh, please let us know, get in touch and we can either send you a digital copy or we can send you a hard copy. Uh, so don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and thanks for watching.